people. This journey began 36 years ago. And it's not 36 years ago before I was born because I was 46 this year. It began when I was a 10 year old child driving around in St. Andrew with my father who was assisting Arlington to Costa Edwards in that 1971 election. It was through the eyes of a 10 year old that I saw political representation at its best. I remember that period as if it was yesterday. I remember the floods. I remember St. Joy coming out, sleeves rolled up, rubber boots on, helping people move houses in that flood. I remember the bridge breaking down, the bridge where my, my uncle and aunt live, Riverside breaking down. I remember the houses washing away. And I remember Joy's presence through all of that activity at 10 years old. I also remember him visiting our church. There's a church called the New Testament Church of God in Ishuri Village. The pastor at that church at the time was a lady named Sister Skeet. And whenever the Costa Edwards was coming to our harvest, we were all excited. Not only because he would bring a choir, but because Joy would also bring a hundred dollar bill. And in those days, a hundred dollars was a lot of money. And Sister Skeet, being the pastor and businesswoman that she was, made sure he got a rosy welcome. <laughs> but my steps were ordered in another uncanny fashion. Every evening, I would have to walk from Queens College, which was in Constitution Road, to Belmont Road, where Joy had his business, because my father also was an employee of the Great Arlington de Costa Edwards. So I was able to see firsthand that institution called the Federal High School. Now I don't know how many of you remember the Federal High School. I know that a number of you here were educated at that school. A number of my school friends were educated at the Federal. And I would sit and watch Mr. Edwards at work and marvel at how he could get so many things done. Never knowing that at some point later in my life, I would probably have to be functioning in the same capacity. But the beauty again is 40 years later, I found myself on that same spot, sitting in an office in a company called the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union, the same spot, sitting in an office helping people, just as I saw Joy help people in St. Andrew. Advising people on how to save, advising them on how not to borrow, advising them on how to start to build their homes, and advising them that the credit union movement was the only institution that could facilitate their upward mobility as poor black people. And I enjoyed every minute of it until that gut feeling told me your time was up. I also do not consider it an accident or coincidence that I am the first female candidate, as Comrade Bobby Morris mentioned, to contest the seat in St. Andrew since the late Dame Ermie Bourne. Like her, I am a St. Andrew woman. Like her, I am from a Shuri tribe. A big Shuri tribe. And like her, we share the same birth sign, which is Leo, the sign of the leader. Ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be an accident. So when people ask me why you never stepped forward before, I remind them that our steps are ordered and ladies and gentlemen, nothing, nothing happens before it's time. So you can tell that I was interested in politics when most little girls were passionate about dollies. But throughout my life, I tried to avoid elective politics. But I'll tell you this, you can avoid something, but then that thing can affect you in ways that you cannot ever block. And politics affects me in a way that I cannot explain. On the morning after the Democratic Labour Party defeat in 1999, I stayed in my bed till after midday. It is true I had worked as a freelancer for CBC the night before. I actually
actually covered the election results at the Alleyne School. And I got home after 12, followed the election right through, went to bed, and got up the next morning in a deep, deep depression. Now something that is superficial to you cannot affect you emotionally. I was depressed. And it was that day that I told my husband, we got to get busy. I felt that as a couple with skills, we had a responsibility to see how we could work with a mutual friend called David Thompson to bring the DLP back to the level that we felt it could be. We had to be active. It was soon after that defeat that Harold Hoyt offered me a column as a freelancer. It was felt that a minority government or minority party like ours needed all the support it could get in highlighting the bread and butter issues in Barbados. And they said they needed someone who was fearless, someone who would not bow to pressure, and he felt that person was me. I gladly accepted because I missed writing. I really missed it because I love it. But it was from that day that the lick started, and they are continuing up to this day. <laughs> The bees at the credit union had issues with me working for them and writing a newspaper column. They were told that I was exercising my constitutional right and as long as they did not write that column on the job, they could not touch me. That didn't go down too well with the bees. So of course attempts were made to make my life difficult in other areas. But as you have recognized by now, my head does not bow. What I learned very early is that once you are critical of anything in Barbados, you become labeled a dem, or even worse, you are labeled non-patriotic and anti-government. Now mark you, my columns were not openly political. They dealt with issues and dealt with them frankly, or as the column was called, candidly. But they didn't like that. People call my workplace, curse me, put down the phone in my ears. Now I can't abuse on my people's phone, and I obviously knew that. So they would have their say and put down the phone. One day I was walking across the road on Broad Street to get to CS Pharmacy from the taxi stand area. And a man stopped to let me cross and shouted and asked me, Nobody break your foot yet! <laughs> so I stood up in the road and I asked him if he was ready. It was only after the horn started to blow to move the traffic that I moved. And it's only when I got in CS Pharmacy that the reality hit me that man could let me down. <laughs> But you know bees, they are bullies. Love 